Hi there, Curbnaut here. Space. It's empty. That's why they call it space, right? Wrong. And here's why. Space is a vacuum, but it's not a perfect vacuum. If we start at Earth and work our way out, we can begin to understand how it all works. The International Space Station orbits high above the Earth, but not high above the atmosphere. In fact, the ISS actually has an orbital trajectory that remains inside Earth's atmosphere. So why doesn't it slow down and fall out the sky? Well, it's because the atmosphere isn't one big slab of air of all the same density. It's actually a gradient of densities, with the densest part sitting close to the ground and the least dense parts floating around at the top of the atmosphere. We can actually break down Earth's atmosphere into five main layers. The troposphere, stratosphere, and metasphere all sit near Earth and contain all our clouds, weather balloons, and the ozone layer. Moving further up, we get into the, the thermosphere. It's here that the ISS orbits. At this height, sound waves are no longer transferred through the air as its density is so low. The density of the air is so low that a molecule of oxygen will travel about a kilometre before colliding with another molecule. Despite this, the temperature at this height can rise as high as 1,500 degrees centigrade. Though, because the atoms are spread so far apart, temperature, in its normal sense, loses its meaning. If you were on the ISS and held a thermometer outside, it would read a temperature below zero degrees centigrade, as the energy lost by radiation would be greater than the energy gained by contact with other atoms. At this altitude, the ISS is in what's called a decaying orbit. If we were to turn off all the systems and let the space station do its own thing, we would find that it would slowly decrease in altitude until it fell out the sky and burned up upon re-entry. This is due to very slight air resistance, and in fact the ISS's engines on the Russian Zvezda module that boosts its orbit every now and again to keep it from plummeting to its doom. Moving even further out, we come to the exosphere, which starts somewhere between 500 and 1000 kilometers above sea level, and it keeps going till the atoms are no longer bound to Earth's gravity. At the upper end of this layer, atoms are blown about by solar wind that can be picked up and flung off into outer space. At this point, we're about halfway to the moon. That's about 190,000 kilometers above sea level. So we're halfway to the moon and we've only just managed to truly escape Earth's atmosphere. But even if we kept going, we can still find a few hydrogen atoms per cubic meter, along with many types of radiation, subatomic particles, and cosmic rays. So, the idea that space is completely empty is just a bunch of hot air.